<laughs> versus uh, seabed quarrying. So, hello, EGR people and supporters. Uh, we say hello from the Philippines or archipelago. I'm here with my friend Ja and his network. It's great to be here. Uh, what I want to say is that DGR is great in organizing online, using online tools, organizing globally, and that's all great. But it's a whole, a, a whole other level if you if you meet someone in person. So yeah. I've, I've been knowing Ja for some years online, and now I finally had the chance, yeah, uh, credit to my dear wife Ja Ja, because <laughs> she made it possible that we came here from China um, oh, that I meet him in person yeah. and his lovely family and yeah. his network here. And we're having a great time. And I met so many wonderful people doing so much great work for environmentalism and for social justice. And uh, this, this islands are absolutely stunningly beautiful here. And there's so much... Um, ecological diversity here and it's it's really impressive so I would I would encourage anybody who can ever afford a flight to, to to the Philippines to come here to see how people live here how what people do to protect the environment and yeah so I just encourage you to to come here if you ever have the chance so Ja do you want to say anything for our folks in DGR? Well, um, I think um, we would like to invite you to visit Archipelago and make the network here. Maybe um, your visit can help you, you know, to learn some practices or values or wisdom, uh, especially from the communities of Archipelago, especially we have a very diverse culture, um, ecology, and I think it is really important uh, that you see and experience uh, how a third world country looks like. Uh, so, you're, you are very welcome to visit Archipelago, uh, everyone. Yeah. Come by. Let's Come drink by. to that. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm falling in love with the land here and the people. Ah, and yeah. I will be Good. back, I promise. Whenever I can afford a flight, I'll be back. Okay. Not until I Do you know how long this has been under protection? Uh, if I am right, it's around way back 2016 or 20, between 2016 to 2018. And what was here before? No protection? Uh, not really protected. And the major problem here is because uh, this is one of the most uh, famous hiking destinations. I see. You know, there's no real uh, regulation. Uh, most of the people who, you know, oh, do a overnight in camping, they just leave their trash I see. You know, on the campsite. I see. So well, that is one of the major problems, particularly yeah. in the hiking, you know, society. And but if, but uh, aside from that, of course, the other aspect is someone who want to claim the land. Uh -huh. Those you know, uh, private owners who want to claim and you know, want to, to to develop the land. So that is one of the most crucial uh, situation about you know, the area. Okay. Yeah, it's absolutely impressive. I've never been into an area that is so wild and rich here. <clears throat> and there are many protected animal species here, like eagles, snakes, and reptiles and also uh, native trees 
it's really a jungle. This is <laughs> really a jungle here. Wow. So this is what the world used to look like before human civilization started destroying it. The natural forest here in Asia, the jungle really. The air is so fresh and clean here. It feels so good. Take a deep breath. It's so healthy. showing me all of these charts. You're welcome, boys. It's so great. It's a lifetime, an experience I will never forget. And this is therapy for DGR people here. <laughs> I've never seen that pristine wilderness in my life. It really moves me to tears. Uh, tungko is, uh, you know, uh, a material for if you want to cook something. Ah. Tungko. Okay. And what is Limliman? Limliman. Uh, Usually, uh, if you have a basket and then a hen, put your egg there. Ah. Uh, that's, uh, we call it the hen lim lim, you know, the, their egg. So lim lim is, you know, a place where a uh, chicken can rest or people can rest. Ah, okay. Lim lim man. I see. So there's a place to rest here. <laughs> I think there are, this is lim lim of wild chicken here. That's why maybe they... Put it, it the uh, that name, you know. But we didn't see any wild chickens here. Yeah, because the tree was already disturbed. <laughs> oh yeah. And we didn't see any snakes. Where are the snakes? Are they hiding? Yeah, probably they're hiding. hiding. Yeah. Uh, usually, snakes are in not a tree like this. They will. They don't want to be in a disturbed place. This, what we see here. This is the real beauty of, you know, of the, yes. uh, the, so, uh, you know, of this uh, world, this planet. Absolutely. When I, when I saw uh, the last remains of old growth uh, redwood in America, in California, we were together with Max and others, I thought, so this it's the way the world is supposed to look like and this is the way the world used to look like before uh, civilization destroyed it and here is another part of the world where we see what is supposed to look like 
and it used to look like that maybe I don't know in the Philippines maybe 200 or 300 years ago it was most of the landscape was like this yeah, I guess probably. probably and this is one of the last remaining spots that is really quite wild and protected so as you can see these are the protected areas that is the summit so this is the Par Parrot's Peak? The Parrot's Peak is... Uh, is it not this one? That, that, that one. That one, yes. Yeah, that one. So in all of this distant protected area, there's no housing, no development, no industry. At, at the moment, but there, the moment. there is a tendency that they, some developers want to develop this because it's on the ground, on the part of the ocean, See, those are the ranges, the Mount Payang, the Mount Pagita, then the Mount Padula where we will mm -hmm. visit tomorrow. Mount Padula and Mount Payang. Okay. So that, this is a different province. We are in Cavite province, uh -huh. and that is uh, Batangas province. Oh, I see. Okay. Wow. see the agricultural expansion destroying the forest down there. So hi everyone, I get Morris here. He visited me from Germany here uh, to going to archipelago. So tonight um, we're going to use uh, two of the, the native instruments we have here. Uh, we call this a uh, harp joe and the other one is uh, bongkaka so on our practice bongkaka was used if we are calling for a rain you know so this is how we play it okay boris give me a bit <laughs> okay <laughs> 6 a.m. in the morning, we're heading for another mountain to hike and meet locals and the community. This is the normal crazy traffic here with this small uh, buses they're using. 
down on the field. So is that a buffalo or is it it's a buffalo? Yeah, it's a, it's a, uh, a water buffalo. Asian water buffalo here. Farmer's best friend. Yeah. Today just use them uh, as working animals or also for milk? Uh, just for working. Okay. okay. Looks nice. Nice big, big buffalo here. They got quite cute little horses here. I've seen some dudes riding on them. Ooh, very small, smaller than any horse I've ever seen. So another hiking day in a very beautiful rural community here. So Ja, what happened again? Can you tell again what happened to this community? Um, you said they were better off um, some years ago. Yeah, the farmers were more happy. It used to be a very, you know, a simple community. We are satisfied. Uh, before uh, this mountain, we call Batulao. It only has a tour registration for the mountaineer who visit the area, and uh, twenty pesos only for the old trail, and for the new trail is only twenty pesos. Mm -hmm. But of course, years come, especially if there's a kind of economic pressure, mm -hmm. and people also maybe they, you know, they realize that. I'm also from here area and maybe I want also to you know to earn money and that's not bad because you know because of the situation but because of that uh community is starting to argument with each other and you know the conflict started and right now still that conflict was really did something good so you mean increasing tourism is making people more dependent on money basically uh, something yeah Probably that is a good, you know, lens, and I can say that's uh, uh, the reason of also why there's a conflict, you know, in the community. Uh -huh. And money know, destroys relationships. Exactly, exactly relationships. Yeah. Uh, what, for example, what? What a cute little dog. Isn't it? Hey, puppy! Wow. 
So what are the crops that people are farming here mostly? Uh, the most important crops? Yeah, there are several crops here. Like the fruit crops, like the lapidus or radish, uh, peanuts, peanuts, yeah, something like that. Also uh, pineapple? Uh, pineapple is not really in this part, but it's in the daytime. And uh, because of course it, they always base you know on their soil. Yeah, so sure. on their soil, what really fits here is those, you know, those uh, uh, vegetable, mm -hmm. especially nuts. Nuts, peanuts. But uh, the farmers here have a major concern because uh, some of the farmers lose their farmland because uh, it was already converted to subdivision. You know. Ah, that's also a problem. Yeah. And Subdivision for what? For housing? For housing. And for the, the local people or for foreigners? Uh, for local people and foreigners. Both. You know, for yeah. people who can you know, afford to buy I see. a house. It's and the selling area. point. The selling point of that subdivision is of course the view of this mountain I and see. of course the weather of the area. Because yeah. you know, uh, this area is much, uh, have a good weather like the Gaitai rather than in the city. Yes. It's... And you can feel that right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's very comfortable to be here. It's not too hot, not too cool. There's a nice little breeze going. And it's uh, incredibly beautiful. It's incredibly beautiful. again everywhere just roaming around freely Jazz said he's gonna show me the conflict area where the military and, uh, and local militias or something are having a conflict But this is safe. We are not. <laughs> yeah. We're not. Uh, we're totally safe. Don't we're worry. not uh, getting in contact with any armed people yeah. here. Yeah, it's uh, probably safe. There are no operation right now because okay. if there's an operation, uh, mountaineers will be not allowed to. Uh, no. All right. Uh, okay. And also the locals will also inform us right away. Okay. The network here. Good. Wow, there's a goat. A native goat. A native little goat. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Poor little chicks. Nasa Samit po. Nasa Samit. Ano Ano ba Breathtakingly beautiful. Amazing. Let me take a picture here, Boris. Sure. That is Mount Badulu, by the way. That is the summit. Ah. Another coconut. I can't help but dream about spending the rest of my life here at some point. 
Just a dream. <laughs> I cannot help falling in love with this land here. Growing wild and some are planted. Okay, so that's just yeah, one species and not a domestic yeah. kind of coconut? Okay. For me. Okay, Hi. nice, nice to meet you. Okay. Hi. Hi. Breakfast. <laughs> People are very chilled, relaxed, and very friendly. This lugao, by the way. Lugao, yeah, it's a uh, ingredients. Uh, main ingredients is rice. Rice, okay. Rice and some, you know, like a rice porridge with a bit of meat. Yeah. Okay. And then, if you want to make it more flavorful, you can put uh, extra fish sauce, mm, uh, yes. garlic, mm -hmm. uh, black pepper, and then a chili, hachi oil. Great, wonderful. That's a good breakfast for a hiking day, huh? Tuwi Batanga, si Baren yun. Yeah, I was wondering what is this? Uh, that is uh, uh, pork intestine. Uh, Don't eat that if you can. <laughs> I can, I can. I, the Chinese eat that too. <laughs> I, the Germans don't eat that usually, but I would just swallow. I think it's very nutritious. Huh? Uh, I have to get accustomed to local food. Huh? Dog is begging for my fried banana here. So delicious. Mm.
you can see, you know, the parrot's beak. The parrot's beak? Yeah, you can... Oh, you cannot, you cannot oh. zoom on this mode. You can see the silhouette. I can see the silhouette mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. This one, Boris. Ah, uh, okay. That one. Yeah. Yeah, that, that one. That's the Paris peak. Okay, and the conflict areas is this which? Area. This area, that area. The Toong Trail. There was a time that a helicopter, military bring their helicopter, mm -hmm. and put bombs, you know, and that Bombs? Area. Yeah. Because they are hunting, you know, for the rebels. Ah. for a few hours. Junior! 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 Pugin nyo na! Buti hindi kayo naging kamukha ng tatay nyo kundi susumpa nyo tatay nyo! Dumali ka na naman! Cindy! Ito ka nga dito! Ito yung gusto ko, ito yung maganda-ganda at ikaw yung pangit mo! Pangit mo nung nakikita ko. Hi, Tito Jack. Hello, how are you? I miss you. I miss you. Laki-laki mo na. Ano, kamu sa school? Ngayon pa lang papapasok. Ngayon taon. Ngayon taon? Ano mo na? College. College siya? Ano ang kanina mo? Ano po? BSBA. BSBA na ano? Financial Management. Oo, marami ka pera nga ano yun. Bibigay sa tatay mo yun. Ano na, nakawin natin ko. Kurap pa naman to, kurap. Ha? Uh, this is uh, his son, Tui, hey. and mm -hmm. her, his uh, daughter, Sydney. Hey, hi. This is uh, uh, her, this is Uncle Boris, and my friend. Her name is Cindy. Hi, she's Cindy. Really, she's very responsible. Why are you with your son? Hey, of course. I'm going to go to the direction. Hey, I'm going to go to the direction. I'm going to go to the direction. I'm going to go to the Pupo daw na ko. Ay, ito. Ito dito. Pakilala kita. Tulis pa rin ito eh. Nihintay ko nga lang ito magkaroon ng papangat sa mga asawa eh. Ha? Sa pang asawa? So this is Tatay Resto. Hello. This is Boris. Nice to meet you sir. Can you remember Max? Max? Max has been here. Yeah, we've been in the same organization. Uh, yes, yes. And, but he's from Germany and Max is from the United States. Yeah. So he's the one who's celebrating the anniversary of the new tail. Uh -huh. Okay. So there's a you know few meal that he will prepare for us. Ranger. So will we stay here for a while or yeah, we'll for a while. We will stay here for a while. Okay. Okay. And, uh, this is a wild chicken, a rooster, huh? Okay. How did he catch them? How did he catch them? Uh, there's the uh, trap. Trap? Mm -hmm. And usually they use another labuyo to arouse, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of labuyo uh, at the forest. Mm hmm. Yeah. Is that another one? Yeah. Wild. <laughs> but these these are not wild. Uh, native. Uh, ah, Texas. Texas, man. I think you're pinaka native natin yung talaga native. Tatay.
Are just hardy and strong. Yeah. Are they used for meat or for? For meat. Also for milk. Yeah, for meat. For, for meat only. Meat only milk. Meat. Okay. That is a milk goat. Okay. Okay. Na. What, what is he doing? What is he doing with him now? Okay. Going up to the peak now. <coughs> Just stayed a little bit more down there. So far away. I'm climbing to the peak now with a guide. <coughs> One of Joe's friends. Shortly, yeah. Uh, so we we've been hiking quite a dangerous, unsecured trail here. It's very, very steep. So if you fall down there, you're pretty dead. But they don't seem to mind so much. So this is the highest peak here, more than 800 meters above sea level, and you have a breathtaking view here down uh, to the bay. They're selling snacks and water and coconuts. Quite a lot of Filipino tourists here. I have not seen a foreigner. So we have been climbing this high peak there, highest peak, 800 above sea
ice, ice, crash ice, crash ice, okay. It's a bit windy here, I hope uh, the audio turns out okay. These people live here, and you said, you just said, they are quite poor, but they're happy, they're doing okay. As long as they, their livelihood and their neighbors not being destroyed. Yeah. So they have their, their small business here, and they're doing fine. They're happy. <clears throat> but the real danger is uh, development. <laughs> Increasing dependency on money, monetary economy. Do you believe it works? Yeah. See? Ooh. Do you have to whistle this way exactly? Yeah. No. It was the only way. Yeah. And it was at the end. very hot now it's noon time and Jar says that we need to whistle to call the wind to come to cool us So the Philippines, or Archipelago, the Philippines is the colonial name, so the Spanish colonized it and named it after their King Philip. The Philippines and uh, our archipelagos consists of more than 7,000 islands, imagine that. It has a population of about 110 million. Mm. The whistling worked. <laughs> it is one of the most biodiverse regions in the whole world, imagine that. Many of these islands have uh, endemic species that do not exist anywhere else in the world. Environmentalists here are doing crucial work, absolutely crucial work. And at the same time, the Philippines are one of the most dangerous places for environmentalists because um, people are poor and companies hire goons and they will kill one, kill a person for an equivalent of fifty to hundred dollars that happened in the past. It's still happening. Um, Jaws is very smart and he's learned security culture very well. So he lives in kind of a 
gated community because he knows that he is kind of a frontline activist and he needs to stay safe and the best way to stay safe is in a strong community. He's a community organizer and the place he lives there's uh, that's fenced, it's a gated community and there's a guard controlling everyone who gets in and that's a good and necessary thing. Hello. 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 This is the way people live here. And as stated earlier, I mean compared, they are quite poor, but they are happy. They are making their living and they have a good life as long as their livelihoods are not being destroyed. It becomes more and more clear to me here how destructive money and the monetary economy can be because people are very self-organized here and as long as you have community and people just taking care of each other and helping each other they're totally fine they don't really need much money but as soon as you introduce more tourism and people richer people from the cities come in and just well do tourism people become more dependent on money and money destroys their communities and their relationships to each other. That's what you can see here very clearly. It's a process that's been um, happening in Europe like, I don't know, two or three hundred years ago. And we are already absolutely separated and atomized individuals and neoliberal politics and in Europe and the Western world, but here these people are fine as long as they have their basic resources and their communities. So these <laughs> are the vehicles that are used here for public transport. along with the horses here, obviously, in this community.
Ja, how do you call these? Uh, tricycles. The tricycles, yes. Also for public transport. I said, but you know, that's not good. We're going to take one of those now. It's very really fun to do this. <laughs> And this is Jen Boris. Mm -hmm. Jen, this is uh, Boris. Hey, this is our grandma here. Basa, basa. This is Nane Rita. She's the grandma of you know of the network. And Rita, this is Boris. Boris. Ah, uh, yeah, from Germany. Ja, ja, na wajong. Ja, ja, yeah. Just uh, just. Just just. Just just. Just just. Just just. Just just. Just just. So, another neighborhood. Different chickens. Ah, die machen dir die Füße gleich sauber. Das ist ein schöner großer Hahn, ha? Wird auch für, für Kämpfe, Hahnkämpfe benutzt. Die laufen überall hier herum. You will not wear it. So there we see very large sugar plane, uh, sugar, sugar cane plantations here. This region where we are going to camp is full of sugar cane. <laughs> This is a bit bigger already. There, freshly planted, smaller sugar cane.
tropical camping. Never did that before. This area is full of mango trees. This is obviously being used for grazing, but it's totally dried out and overgrazed. You see the stumps of the trees they removed, and there was just one single cow. So this is a Kubo, a traditional Filipino house, including chickens and banana palms and, and this is a jackfruit, this is a jackfruit and to the left there's the room for sleeping and here's our rooms for storage and so on and as always chickens are everywhere so our tent is set today we're gonna camp Here's my sweet little daughter. And we have company here, like always. Sweet little piglets. Chickens, like always. They are just everywhere. Cute little chickies. Wow, a beautiful rooster again, huh? Guck mal, Ati, das ein schöner Hahn, hm? Siehst du den? So, back there is Mama Pig. Chickens are taking a rest in the jackfruit tree. Like naturally, chickens sleep on trees. That's, that's how it works, and this is what they do here in their natural environment in Asia. Is they call the the princess or? Oh, she goes. I don't know. You get up at any stick to? You get up at any stick to? Bring the tuna with sauce of garlic. Yeah, palamansi. Palamansi. Oh. Soy sauce, right? That's right. And black pepper. Black pepper. Great. That's gonna be delicious. And we're using this, you know, branch of banana tree. Mm hmm. Interesting, yeah. You see, it's too hot if you, you know, yeah. use a normal brush. Yeah. Great. Palang. So now the tuna is being roasted <coughs> on a coal on a grill. There we go. Oh, tuna is ready. Freshly served from a banana leaf. Delicious. Tropical cuisine. Absolutely delicious. We are from Germany, and uh, for you, I want to introduce the community of Matasapulo. So this community is very diverse. We get that the you know uh, majority of the people here are coming from the farmers, you know. They are farmers and they are working with the land and of course they are protecting the forest. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really great that we have some official here 
at the local chief. Uh, we have the elders, we have the youth, which is, a, you know, they are part of some environmental organization that was created here, you know, in, the, okay. in their area. Uh -huh. So, yeah, you guys are very welcome. I hope you can feel their warm. You know, they're very excited. That's why we have a gathering like this. And usually we do this every time we have a guest, you know, coming from other places, even not foreigner, but even, you know, for the locals. That's how we work here. So, yeah, welcome. And uh, please meet the community of Mataas Pulo. Okay? Thank you so much. Uh, thanks. So, this is how we drink. The tra traditional way uh, how Filipino drink. We call it Tagay. <laughs> it's, more about, it's more about promoting the idea or culture of sharing. Now, you, we, we can share with one glass of, you know, and okay. sharing with one bottle. So, it's more about sharing. Okay. 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 All right. So, <laughs> all right. Thank you so Go much. Ahead. Thank you so much. Um, I, I want to I want to say <laughs> something. <laughs> I came a very far away from uh, Germany. It's very special and exciting for me to be here. Um, um, and I'm very excited because the the Philippines are the mo one of the most biodiverse places in the whole world. So they are very, very special. The nature is very, very special. I hope you're aware of that. And I thank you so much for working to protect this. I think this is so important. And I, I've really, Ja has shown me so wonderful places, all these mountains we, we've been climbing. And I fell in love with your land and your country and the people. Thank you. <laughs> Kami po ay lubos na nagpapasalamat sa pagkakataon na ibinigay niyo sa oras na ito para sa pagtitipon-tipon ng lahat ng sektor na naririto upang pag-usapan ang mga bagay upol sa ikaw-unlad at ikagaganda ng environment ng mataas na pulo na Sugubatanga. Hinihiling po namin ang kaligtasan ng bawat isa sa mga tutulog po dito sa ating mga bisita, sa ating environmentalist na naririto. Nawa po ay ligtas silang manatili hanggang kung kailan sila ba um, kung hanggang sa sila ay aahon po ba kung aahon man po sila sa bundok ay hanggang sa maka makabalik sa kanila nilang tahan. Okay, magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. At uh, tayo po ay nagtipon-tipon muli dito sa ating uh, Uh, paanan ni Apayang at tayo ay nagkaisa dito na hindi inaakala na tayo ay may ipo ng ganitong kadami. Ha? Huh? Diba? <laughs> Salamat sa lahat. Bigyan naman natin ng isang alakas. We welcome natin si Sir Boris, Ma'am Jaja, and the kids. At yung pong buo na sa malahat. Ay, uh, ito kasi. Kapjen <laughs> dito ka. Kapjen, Kapja, Kapmaidin. Good evening sa inyong lahat. Um, especially po sa... Huwag naman. O oh, yun may hapon, baka pa. Especially sa ating mga visitors dito. Um, maraming salamat sa pag-attendin nyo ngayong gabing to dahil sinamahan nyo kami. Pati yung mga visita natin. Yung mga sabaka natin. Tapos, sa ngayon, hindi natin nabubuksan pa yung apayang. Pero may balak tayong buksan yun. Hindi lang natin alam kung kailan pa dahil may sabihin na nating may issue. Pero pipilitin nating mabuksan ulit para sama-sama ulit tayong umakyat ng kapaya. Sana tulungan nyo din kami na mapalinis yung ating environment dito. Ang ating train. Mas mag-improve yung ating environment. Mas mag-iwasan yung mga mga dumem. Makuha natin yung mga ay makuha natin yung mga dapat natin yung i-achieve. Terima kasih.
Good evening to all of us. First, I want to thank you all for coming here. Tonight, coming here. Sana po ay nag-enjoy ko. So, si Boris mag-share ng ilang perspective kung ano yung nakikita niya doon. Uh, about sa uh, global perspective kung ano nga ba talaga nangyayar sa ecology natin. Boris, would like to go? Okay. Yeah, thank you so much, everybody. I uh, could uh, not understand, but I got it. I had a translation part parts of it, and um, it's impressive what you are doing here. Um, I'm from Germany, and Ja and myself are members of a global environmental organization, and I had. Uh, opportunity last year to visit the United States of America where our organization started in California and there are so many people in America in Europe and now also I see here who are doing great work on the ground to protect the environment and that's so important because the, the archipelago where we are it's a very, very special place. It's uh, one of the most biodiverse regions in the whole world. And I'm absolutely impressed by the beauty that I can see it and the beauty of nature where Ja uh, lent me, um, where Ja brought me um, the mountains and, and I, just, uh, I just experienced a very small part of of Archipelago and I hope I can experience more in the future but I wanted to what I wanted to say is that the threats that we are facing in the world globally and locally are more or less they are complex in some ways but they are sim simple in other ways um, wherever you go wherever people protect the environment it's it's people and corporations rich people and corporations for profit that are destroying the environment that's mm. everywhere the same it's never for the people to uh you know it's never to advance the rights of the people or to advance the livelihoods of the people it's always for profit for a very few and that's the problem and that's uh, what we have to stop wherever we are that's the same problem here it's the same problem in europe and it's the same problem in america wherever you go rich people and rich corporations are destroying the environment for their profit and to, to uh, oppose that is difficult, of course, because our enemies are very, very powerful. They are super powerful. Um, I think the best way we can come up with, and I think you are doing a wonderful job here, I see so many people and also young people, which is so important, is building strong communities of resistance. We need to build wherever we are, communities of resistance mm -hmm. they uh, that that have the analysis and that that can evolve strategies um, that are adapted to their uh, specific problems to fight the destruction of the environment okay um, yeah it's just it's just wonderful to be here it's too wonderful to see all of you and it's wonderful to see especially young people to engage in environmentalism and I I, I thank you so much for, do, for doing that and I hope you will continue doing that it's it's um, it's oftentimes hard but the more you become and the more you have this community and the strength humans thrive in community and the more you have this community the the better you will will, will be doing and the better you will be able to to resist the destruction okay thank you so much you for so your much. wonderful work
be boring. Okay po. Ayan, thank you po, uh, sir. Do, uh, doon naman sa cup, doon naman po sa kwan ng kabataan. Di ba, nakikita ninyo na tara, madaming basura sa alsada pa ng nasubo. Kasi so, hindi talaga nakukolek ng ng ano, ng hindi, parang ano, ano lagi. Ano, 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 hindi na tayo hey, rin yung We're just talking about the, you know, one of the issue here is uh, you know the growing number of your you know garbage, garbage. Mm -hmm. because uh, no, one is no one is collecting it and you know in this yeah, uh, community dump truck here in so of course if that is a, a practice a there will be you know it is a big threat you know in their surroundings because people have you know have the option just to put their garbage in their surroundings that's why we're talking about what will be the best strategy how we will you know knock you know in the LG because that is the mandate of the local government and that is your obligation to collect garbage to, to, to each community here in their province but before they already did that for the longest time uh, they are just collecting uh, garbage and there was a time that they you know uh, take action and from that action uh, that uh, dump truck starts, you know, to collect uh, their garbage. But suddenly, after a few, after a few months, uh, because of the pandemic, they stopped doing collecting it again. Sure, I mean garbage management is is very important, and it's uh, it should be done so that you collect the garbage and and dispose it somehow if you can. But actually. The problem goes much deeper, um, and if you look, the, the plastic pollution is a gigantic problem, especially for the oceans. This cannot be solved um, without... What, what we actually have to do is stop producing the garbage in the first place. So stop the companies who produce the garbage, because we are not producing the garbage. We are forced to buy our products wrapped in plastic. There's no other way. And that, 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 that didn't used to be like that before. Like in the 1940s, 50s, 60s, there was no plastic pollution because there was no plastic <coughs> packaging. And still people could have food and everything. So the plastic industry has to be stopped. <laughs> and that's, of course, that's a big, big task, but it will not stop without that. And collecting garbage and so on, it's all fine and it's important, but it's not uh, a real solution it's not a long-term solution mm. the long-term solution is we have to stop producing our societies have to stop producing garbage that is not uh Especially you know one-time use plastic yeah one-time use plastic that that should never have been invented in the first place and it's all for profit again it's all for profit it's never for the benefit of the people <coughs> Kita, ang anam ko, ang BSU nag-start ng mag-implement ng... Tropical camping with Ja and the local community here. And the cricket song is so wonderful. So, good morning everyone, tropical morning, ah, it's, the sun is up and it's slowly starting to get hot. The night was <coughs> not I didn't have much sleep and just got used to this all of this noise 
Silence is really a Western concept, I think. As you hear people, <coughs> okay, we had a party, of course, but you hear people, you hear chickens and roosters, uh, pigs, um, cricket song all the night long. And it's quite stormy, it was quite windy in the middle of the night. Yes. And also Jen, uh, nila eh. Finally. Finally. We will see with the knife with the bolo Filipino machine. Hello, Boris, would you like to open it for you? For you? Would you like to touch it before you open it? <laughs> anyway, you can, you can, uh, you know. Naman to big yan. Naman to big. Why do you think it's going to different? Yes, I Sweet Sweetheart, you will see. The thing we buy usually in a supermarket in Europe is just inside. inside. Oh. This is the shell. This is the way it grows naturally. No, another coconut it looks like uh, this color, you know? Yeah, that's inside. So, so big. It's so, it's so fresh. Big. It's not dried yet. Oh. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, you should drink it like this. You can eat that. <laughs> Mm. and chickens and this is a nice black rooster and here the space is for the chickens to sit on their eggs so this is the traditional housing here this is the way people live in the rural philippines A jackfruit tree full of fruits, but they are not ripe yet. The wonderful thing here is that oh, there's a coconut. Food grows everywhere coconuts, banana, jackfruit, mango. I 
just love it. Water buffalo. Asia water buffalo. But he was tied to a tree. He has a rope for his nose. Because uh, Jonathan, uh, he have some, you know, he have animals, go chicken that he need to, you know, take care of. So before we go down, we need to make sure that you know there are fish, there are water. Oh, I see. Okay, he lives here. Uh, that yeah, he, he sees too, also that place. Oh, that is there, you know, uh, farmland here. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> Packaging nila yung anti-flooding. Yes. Doon nakatago siya. Pero yun yung ano. At ito ay project ng DPWH at saka ni Congress Manuel. Ang dami pera na naman niya. So sure. Keep back. Keep back. Okay. So very nice to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't really understand much of what you're, you've been talking about. <laughs> but Judge told me that, and you gave introduction before. I, I actually... I didn't film your introductions. Maybe everybody could please just tell me quickly uh, who they are and what they are doing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Shensi, uh, a community leader for indigenous people in Rizal. And we've been working all over the place in Philippines with regard with Four Peace Communities. Uh, com yeah. Four Peace Communities was those who were part of conditional cash transfer. <coughs> and aside from that, we've been we've been working with the uh, NGO groups with regards uh, fisher box, uh, farmers, drivers, and and other sectoral. We've been working against cyber, cyber quarry and reclamation and offshore mining. Okay, great, thank you. Next, I didn't film before, that's why I, I would kindly ask you to introduce yourself uh, and give me a short update, a short intro into your work that you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am an ordained minister of the United Church of Christ in the Philippines. Uh, I am now assigned in UCCP, United Church of Christ in the Philippines, in Tagaytay, Tagaytay City. Mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, I am a convener of the Cavite Ecumenical Group. This ecumenical group uh, is a group among the church workers mm -hmm. and members of the church, mm -hmm. from the Roman Catholic, from the Episcopalian Church, from the Unida Ecumenical, the Methodist group. Mm -hmm. So anybody who is uh, acquainted with ecumenical gathering, so I, I am actually the convener just last year, mm -hmm. I am heading this, this group. Okay. So I am here actually because 
part of the issue now that is uh, being uh, done in I am based in Cavite that's why I came here to have a support group mm -hmm. okay so that's it <laughs> thank you thank you so much Bas Hi. Hello, I'm Bas Omali. Uh, I'm part of Local Autonomous Network. Okay. And uh, solidarity with uh, action with against the you know, environmental destruction. Great, great. Thank you. I'm Bernie Larin. I work for Alianza Tigilmina. In English, it's Alliance Against uh, Mining. Mm -hmm. So my organization is a, it's a national alliance of communities affected by large-scale mining. And we're also here to help the local alliance, Kalasag, to oppose seabed quarrying in Cavite, in this province. Hello. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You want? <laughs> I'm Gon uh, from Local Autonomous Network too. I... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just for documentation. Okay. What about you? Would you like to give a short introduction about your work? Of course. I'm uh, Samalizon of uh, Partido Lakas ng Masa. That's, it's a political party, mm -hmm. uh, meaning it's a party for the masses. Mm. So PLM is uh, working as part of the alliance uh, against uh, seabed quarry. I see. So that's uh, what we call Kalasag. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Kabitenyong Alianza Laban sa Seabed Quarrying. So the, uh, the meeting we had uh, just just uh, today uh, was to plan for the actions and uh, the activities that we will do. Mm -hmm. uh, to to uh, uh, do the uh, the anti seabed quarry and find ways how to stop the implementation of the seabed quarry. Okay. Uh, primarily for the uh, help uh, for the livelihood of the fisher folks yeah. that were affected by the seabed quarrying <clears throat> because seabed quarrying affects the livelihood of the fisher folks fishes and uh, marine aquamarine resources mm -hmm. have been uh, uh, destroyed. Destroyed. destroyed the yeah. the sea the the uh, biodiversity yeah biodiversity was affected due to this uh, seabed quarry and the livelihood of the fisher yes, yes. yes. <clears throat> So it's both an environmental, environmental issue and a social rights issue. Yes. <coughs> yes. Uh, I would, I would like to, to add on the effects of the seabed quarry. Mm -hmm. uh, the first and foremost is the livelihood of the major folks. Mm -hmm. Second is the, uh, what I said the, uh, earlier, the, the biodiversity. Yeah. Yeah. It, it affected the, the types of uh, creatures living in the ocean yeah because uh the seabed the where the fishes are are going where they live mm -hmm. the corals mm -hmm. it's all gone oh yeah because yeah. of the quarry yeah. yeah i see yeah yeah so, so there are no more fishes <laughs> so in this uh, area of the Cavite. who is doing the quarry uh, quarrying is being done. Uh, uh, one is a uh, private, private uh, corporations, uh, corporations mm -hmm. which is for uh, the landfill or the reclamation area, reclamation mm -hmm. projects of the one. One project is the government project. Mm -hmm. The airport being uh, constructed in in Bulacan. The the land that is being used there Misa comes from the, the area under the sea. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. I see. Okay. So one is uh, <laughs> the private <laughs> and another one is government. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because the government has a uh, huge project here mm -hmm. in the area of Cavite uh -huh. where they need to reclaim because they will put up uh, <laughs> Condominium, uh, 
So those those projects don't benefit the people. That's why we oppose we oppose the quarry. It's not be, it will be, it will not benefit the people. Yes, and it is only for the those uh, ones. Uh, the rich people it's the rich always people. for profit yeah, it's always for, profit. for rich people to make profit yeah. so what are your strategies currently just raising awareness are you just starting yeah we just started maybe last year mm, i see uh, 20 or 2023 yeah i've been uh, following i've been following jazz work and he's always posting uh pictures from the actions and i see you had i think two actions or so yeah. about seabed quarrying yeah. maybe yeah. Last October we had a human chain activity uh -huh. in front of the Manila Bay. I saw the pictures uh, from that. We mobilized yeah. around 1,000 yeah. people. That was a lot, yes. It was very impressive. Yeah. Mm. Mama complex. Yeah, what I want to say about renewable energy from a deep green perspective, um, I would say that the deep sea animals and the tuna and the birds, <laughs> they don't need electricity. Humans need it. Yeah. Not all humans need it, but industrialized humans need it. Indigenous people don't need it. They they usually don't uh, ask for electricity. So, from our perspective, industrialism itself is a mistake from the very beginning. Yeah. What humans need is clean water, good food, community, and healthy nature. And then we can be very good, we can have a great life. But we do not need industrialism because industrialism is by itself destructive from the very beginning. So that's very, very short our perspective. Uh, the, the green energy doesn't work anyway. We see that in Germany because Germany is a shining example in the media for, for America, for example. They, they always say Germany is the is the, is the uh, renewable energy uh, shi like the, the shining example for that renewable en energy works, but it's all propaganda because it's not true. We are we are um, still uh, coal mining. One of the largest coal mines in Europe, the largest coal mine in Europe actually is in Germany. So we still use a lot of coal, and we additionally use renewables. So we are not replacing coal and. Uh, uh, the fossil fuels, we, we add to it because the demand is always rising and that's a problem. You cannot have, uh, you know, you cannot have uh, perpetual growth on a, on a finite planet. It's just not possible. So you cannot continue growing forever. It's impossible. We, we are destroying the planet with that. That's why we and are talking about degrowth, right? Yes. Degrowth is a smart idea and it's, it's, uh, we support that, but it's not going deep yeah, enough in the analysis. Not, and I think internationalism, <laughs> Germany has a what we better commitment than the U.S. Yeah. But what we see in Germany mm. now is that actually many people believe in the Green Party because they say we will switch to renewables yeah. and everything will be green and great. And now it's in, it's they are in power and they try to they try to increase uh, renewable and they want to build wind turbines anywhere and what we see now, energy prices are skyrocketing. Mm. They doubled, they tripled actually last year. Mm -hmm. So people are very, very unhappy. They are absolutely pissed off with this government because the energy is <coughs> so expensive that... Because of the yeah. shift yeah. from uh, dirty to green energy. That's one of the reasons. The, the effect is... Uh, this is one of the effects, yes. But the problem is, will the people of Europe and North America accept the concept of degrowth? Because that's also another important aspect of just transition. Mm -hmm. Because what we're saying from the third world is that for the longest time, you have been benefiting from our resources and you are the ones polluting the planet. I have a very big participation. Yes. And, and we haven't even developed. So. You know, they should be. They should be a part. So, uh, in the group, the is, idea uh, of development is an ideology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But, but, but my my question is, how do the people in Europe and North America accept that that argument that you should degrow? Mm -hmm. You should allow <coughs> the people from the third world to develop, for at, at, to some extent. 
to some uh, Paano mo i-detail burn how you di- how do you describe yeah, the growth Yeah, that's also another na, kasi, problem. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, wala ba ba I'm an American citizen, no? How do how do I do recruiting? Diba? I don't know. So, uh, I will reduce my uh, carbon emission, uh, uh, energy consumption, etc. Uh, uh, and it's it's the standard. So Apple right? is good. <laughs> if you live in, as McDonald's, if you live in a capitalist in a yeah, society, yeah. Uh, you it's, cannot be grown. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you cannot. It's always grow. competition to be. Yeah, yeah. Capitalism itself is based on infinite growth. So, degrowth is, is uh, not very popular. Yeah. So, yeah. You know. but that is a good question. I was very hard, you know, that I well, I'm really curious. Eh. We are discussing this uh, idea of. Uh, uh, controlling the emission of carbon because of the climate threat. Yes. Pero, anong model? What model are we talking about? Diba? What's the best possible option? Oh, what, what model are we talking about? Sino ang nag-uusap na ito yung model namin, then we will reduce the emission, then this is our... Ano, Babalik tayo sa ano, maybe, maybe we need to go back uh, on our... Primitive! Uh, no, that, on our ancestors, you know, who, who, <laughs> I would like you to consider yung case ng Ako, I always uh, advocating this. We will keep on uh, uh, discussing about this uh, ano, pen pen, this uh, pen, the cochineo, the how how the car about the battle. Hindi ko nga alam. Kinakanta naman namin dati. Hindi ko naman maintindihan yung kaulog. Tumanda na lang. Wala. Parang tunog lang yun. Tunog lang ba? It's great to be here. <coughs> Filipino people really li- love to together to eat and drink together and community. It's a very nice community. Part is over. Leftovers <laughs> always go to the stray dogs and cats. <laughs> I just love it here. I will be back definitely.